Hey everyone, welcome to A105. This is the final chapter in this A100 series, which has been um, my guide to what I consider to be the essential skills to get started as an assistant editor in um, scripted content and long form workflows. Um, this final one we'll be going through doing turnovers to online. Um, so we'll be focusing on turning over from offline to grade and to sound. Um, and I'll, I'll mention some of the others as I'm going, uh, but those will be the two primary ones I will talk about because, you know, as an entry level assistant or lower jobs or as a second, that's probably the two biggest ones that you'll focus on. Now, you may notice that I'm back in my home office once again, um, and there was a bit of a time delay on this one because I did actually record it while I was down in London when I was recording all of the other modules. Um, but then a couple of things happened after that. So first of all, I noticed when reviewing the footage that uh, there was a couple of things I had forgot to add into the plan and it sort of added in midway through the video and it didn't look necessarily that great. And secondly, um, the, a few days ago, there has been a uh, update to Avimedia Composer um, 2022.10, which has included an array of new features, but there's a few of them that might actually be handy for this purpose. So I'll mention those as I go as well, now that they're a thing with Avid Media Composer. If you want to learn more about the new version, by the way, I do have a video for it on the channel where I go through and break down all of the new features and demonstrate them live for you. So you can uh, check that out on the channel when you're done here. So as continuing with the rest of this A100 series, we're going to be using footage from uh, The Treasurer, that short film that we've been using in the previous modules. So huge thank you again to Page Break Productions. Cheers, Mike and Richard. Much appreciated. So we'll be preparing great and sound deliveries from that locked edit timeline of that. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Right, so before we start on making any online deliverables, um, I just want to clarify exactly what that is. Uh, so us in the edit here, we are offline. Um, so in long form workflows and you know primarily avid workflows, uh, that tends to mean that we work in an offline environment, as in we use proxies. We use low-res versions of the media because it's a lot easier to work with um, in the edit. Now, online refers to the part after the edit's locked where they'll want to link back to the source camera files, hence the online, um, for, you know, grades, polish, you know, sound deliveries, um, you know, visual effects work clip pretty much everything that comes after your edit locks, or sometimes before your edit locks. Now, when you get to this point, most of the time, like 95% of the time, you will be able to ask the, uh, the post house, uh, you know, the sound facility or the online facility, or whoever you're sending deliverables to, for something called a spec sheet. Um, and this will be essentially just a list of exactly what they want and how they like it um, to be turned over. And so you can just follow that to the letter and just deliver them exactly what they want. Now, since for the purposes of this video, we're just making some online deliveries, we're not actually delivering it to anyone or giving it to anybody, um, I've made up a little spec sheet. Uh, so this is what I would use um, to cover all my bases um, uh, to hand over to someone if I didn't know, if they didn't, if they didn't give me a spec sheet, if I didn't know exactly what they wanted. So I would have uh, for grade an AAF of the picture. So this would be a linked uh, AAF. Uh, I'd give them the Avid bin with the project um, just so that uh, they can relink it at their site. Uh, they can open it up in Avid if they need to and just take a quick look um, at things. Um, especially, th this is kind of mostly common for me, if uh, I'm right at the end of my contract and want to say it's a, a local series or something and we're handing over to online and uh, right at the very end and I will provide them with the Avid bin so that if I leave and I move on to something else and I'm no longer around they could peek inside the sequence and um, you know check anything within Avid if they had to. A lot of sound facilities and grade facilities will have Avid. An EDL, a guide picture, just a, a MOV file um, for them to reference with Burned on time code and information and online notes. So this will generally be a marker list of any effects that I've used, respeeds, really any kind of um, you know thing I've done in the 
offline that will need conformed or dealt with later down the link. So that would cover grade. And then for sound, uh, they have a few more things. So ADR lists, so this will be another marker list um, of any um, ADR that needs to be done because um, the ADR will generally be done after the locked edit. In the case of the treasurer, it wasn't. Um, we made a list of all the ADR and it was sent away and they managed to do all of it before we locked the edit and it was put in for the final edit. So, you know, we won't have an ADR list for this, but I will sort of show you as I'm going on what that might look like. Audio AF, um, so unlike the grade one, this will have media with it and it will, you know, be the sound as opposed to the picture. EDLs, so you'll see there's an S there, so this will be two EDLs, one of the picture, one of the sound. You might ask why we're giving sound a picture EDL. If in the off chance that you're, say, delivering to sound before you've locked the edit or they reopen the edit after you've locked it and then you have to do the deliverables again, which happens, we just need to deal with it. A picture EDL of uh, the first delivery and the new delivery, the, the sound guys can compare the two uh, to see what has changed. They know how much of their work they've done thus far can, you know, can be salvaged and you know what they need to do to conform their timeline to match the new thing. Guide okay, picture, again, they'll have slightly less burn-ins um, than the uh, grade ones. They just essentially need time code. MXF audio, um, so I, I like to give them all of the audio from the the ad, uh, all of the MXF imported audio. They don't necessarily need it, but as I've imported it tidily anyway, so it's nice and easy. Source audio, all of the source sound files they will absolutely need, absolutely essential. And split WAVs. So this will just be a WAV file of your dialogue, one of your sound effects, and one of uh, your music. Um, if you have a really complicated timeline and they want more split WAVs and stems, then they may ask for them. But that that is your, you know, universal general three um, that you'll be sending them. Um, and you can see I've I've just thrown this into a document here with um, some tick boxes. I absolutely love me a checklist. Love a checklist. Um, I've got a whiteboard up in my room. Um, I, I quite often will take a, a whiteboard. Well, not so much now, but I used to always take a whiteboard into jobs. Uh, yeah, it, it just helps to, to have it mentally that you have checked something off as you've done it, especially if you get interrupted while you're doing it and you can come back, you know what you got up to. But anyway, uh, let's jump into it, see what was done uh, when I recorded this the first time. So uh, I'll open this up here and I'll bring the timeline over to this window. Right, now uh, let me say that the very first thing that I did before I started making any deliverables at all uh, was I did a tidy up of the timeline. Um, so you can see that I've renamed um, my tracks, I've given them names. Um, this can be done just by a right click on the track and rename track. Um, so I've just used DX to denote dialogue and then um, sound effects are these ones and Music is these last two. Um, no, I've put uh, music L and music T. Um, so the L was licensed. Um, the, this was stuff that was going to end up in the final cut. It was fine to use. This was actually in this script um, that the writer wanted to use a specific track. So it was always going to be used. And uh, music T is a temp uh, because, you know, tend to use temp music when I'm editing. And you can see that uh, these are roughly color coded. Um, so, you know, this kind of turquoise -y color for our music. Uh, we've got orange for our sound effects. And for the most part, my uh, audio is green, my dialogue. Um, this kind of orangey, peachy color. This is actually the uh, ADR that I was telling you about that was recorded later on. So, yeah, uh, nice and tidy. So, when I started retiding the timeline, so I was renamed the tracks and I just would do a pass and make sure that everything is on the right tracks. And I move, move stuff up or down, create new tracks if you have to, um, and just make sure that you don't have, you know, any sound effects or music in here. The dialogue sound effects music are separated. Um, this is really going to help for doing the split waves that it tells you about uh, later on. Um, 
and it just you know, means you're handing over a tidy timeline. You need to represent editorial. You don't want to be handing over a really messy timeline. So we've got rename tracks. Um, we've got our media sifted and sorted. Um, what else do we do? Oh yeah, I applied my markers. So I'll generally apply uh, markers for anything I've done in offline that they'll need to know about in online. This is what I was telling you about when we went through the deliverables in terms of an ADR list and um, you know online notes list. Um, so you can see I've got a bunch of yellow ones here. Um, yellow for me normally denotes um, online notes, conform notes. So this is stuff like, uh, for example, this one. Let's go bring up the markers window and show you these. So I'll always put online at the head, um, just you know, in case people don't notice the color coding uh, to make it clearer. Um, so these are all online notes. Um, and then I would do the same for ADR. So I would put, I'd usually use a blue uh, marker for that. Um, and it'll be ADR in capitals dash. And then I'll just put the line that will need ADR. Um, and maybe the character name as well. Um, uh, and then that ADR list uh, not, won't just go to sound, it could be quite handy to send to your post supervisor because um, they might be organising the ADR sessions and then they've got a list of all the ADR and where it falls in the time code, on the timeline and time coded. Um, and you can just um, s sort these in your markers window by time code, um, like I do here, and then click here to sort by colour. I've only really got yellow ones so shouldn't change much. And then you just grab the relevant color. So when I'm doing online notes, grab all these yellow ones and do right click, export, text, select it. Um, and then just do that once for your online notes, once for ADR notes. If you need to make any other specific notes unique to your project, you can do that as well. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. We're talking about tidying the timeline. So um, I'll apply all my markers notes. So you can see anytime there's an effect on there, that's a stabilize. Um, this is, um, oh, this might be an interesting one actually. Yeah, it's uh, very subtle, but there's a red light, if you zoom in here, reflecting here, it's reflecting on the, the keyhole on the metal, and that's actually the record light from the camera. Um, so I had just put a spectrum at keying effect that keys out the red. So there is much more subtle. You can't really see it. Uh, so that also became a marker's note, key reflection of red light. Um, and the reason we're applying all these notes is so is that if something doesn't um, come through in the AAF, then they have a note there and they can recreate it. Um, so they'll be able to reference the, the grade picture, that, the guide picture that you give them. Um, but this will really help them because then they you know, the guide picture is, is what it looked like in the end, but this is what you've done. So between the two of them, they should be able to recreate what you've done, if should they have, have to. Um, but that's enough about the markers for now. Um, you can see that I've also renamed my um, video tracks, not, not all of them. I've got two for titles. Um, and that was just because I had some that were stacked. Um, I had one for effects. And that was just because I had some colored effects on there because we had a day for night sequence. Um, so what uh, this is supposed to be nighttime, but it looks like this. Um, so this is a super rough um, day, day for night just for the edit. Um, the, the grid did a much better job of cleaning that up. Uh, you can actually watch the full edit um, over on uh, Page Breaks um, YouTube channel. Um, I'll have that link down below if you want to check that out. And I had a separate track uh, listed for uh, my marker notes. Uh, and this V7 I had just thrown over the top here uh, when I first did this record. So this is just a, a final export um, of the film. I actually have ripped this from YouTube. So this is a 1080p version. That's why you get these black borders at times. Because we mastered this in uh, 2K. But uh, yeah, at the head of the timeline, I also put an ID board and a clock. So I have my own uh, clock that I've just made in motion. Um, that's that's this part here. Um, that's counting down from 30 seconds. And um, then at two, 
I've just got a two pop. Um, and sometimes depending on generally, I'll just leave it like that as standard. But um, for uh, different uh, post facilities or sound facilities, um, I might uh, put um, on the two pop just a, a white frame or just a very large two or something like that. Um, and then the ID board um, is just your basic information. So you've got your duration, and this is counting from picture start, so zero one. So you're not including the time of your ID board and countdown. Um, the date you're sending it, the date it was locked. Um, you know, I've got the edit stage and the version. If the spec sheet requests it, then you might have uh, some different information or some additional information on here. Um, but you know, this sort of covers the basics. The most important thing is probably the date, the duration, and like 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 the version. I've used the date for the version for this project. Um, you know, I've got a video on my versioning again over on Patreon. Um, but uh, I like to use dates for versioning. And I've said that this is the long cut, so that's your final one. And the only last thing to mention here, actually, before we go, is, you know, the the tone on the two pop. Uh, so this is actually really easy to get. You don't have to bring in any tone from anywhere. Um, you can actually just generate it with an Avid. So if you come here, where your audio meter is, and this icon to the right, called the meter menu, Click there and then come down to create tone media. So I'll like mine at minus 18. Okay, and lock cut, so I'll just put it there just now. Uh, number of tracks, I'm going to say six. And I would really need a frame, but I'll put one second. And okay. And then Avid will generate tone that you can use. So it's really, really useful that. Um, um, and I do six um, tracks because I'll then go to my tone, right click it, go to modify, modify a clip. Um, and then in this drop down menu here, I'll select set multi channel audio. If you've looked at our ingesting media modules, I think we mentioned this. And so I've got six tracks here. Um, so I have the option to gang them to stereo. So I'll gang three, four, and five, and six into stereo, and then I can slap them on the stereo tracks that I have for my sound effects and my music. Uh, so once I've got that, that's done. And then those are ready to throw on. Now I'm not gonna bother because I've already done it here, um, but that shows you um, how I would put these on. Um, now, of course, um, this won't just go at the front. I've also got a two pill at the very end, and I've used a white frame there. So two, um, so exactly two seconds after final frame. There we go, another two pop. Right now, once you have your timeline um, tidy um, enough at that level, then we're ready to st um, start exporting. So um, I'll go to my exports folder. I'll start with grade. So go to grades and I'll just always create a bin, um, you know, named after the date because by then I might have several exports here. So all my export bins will start with the date, a dash and then the details. Um, so I've just put LC here for lock cut. Um, if um, at some point they reopened the, the lock and we had to do this again. Um, I could just put LC again because there would be an updated date. So I'll open this and see what I've got here. So this is the exact same sequence and the one difference is this time code generator up the top here. So this time code generator is just adding source clip name um, and source time code and sequence time code, of course, and a watermark. So you could use uh, Avid Pan and Zoom to do a company logo watermark, um, but as is very often the case, you'll either use subcap or time code generator to just make some text like this. Just make sure to type in your text in your time code generator or your subcap. You know, bring it a decent size so that you can put it right in the middle of the picture, as you can see here. Um, but don't forget to turn down the opacity a bit, particularly of the background, because by default it'll add a black background box. 
Um, so I usually put this to about 0 0.1 um, and then that is um, absolutely plenty. So I'm the same for all my readers. I want them to be clear to see, um, but you know, not distracting or interrupting from the picture. So recap, watermark. I've put tape because that's where I've used for my commonality for relinking. So it's got the source clip name, source time code, and time code, sequence time code. And this is all the burn-ins the grade will need because they just need to reference for relinking everything, what clip it is, what time code it's at. So if, God forbid, they had to manually relink it, they could from this guide picture. And now that's ready for you to export. Um, and we just export this pretty much as an H264. Um, so I will show you the settings that I would use. So just export as Love Project Raster. So this was 1998 by 1080. Frame rate, same as your project. Um, and then keep his legal range. All of these are fairly standard. And then cut down here and uh, compression. We'll just select H264 and uh, set our target bit rate. I'll put about 10 megabits. That's relatively high quality, but it's not going to be too massive a file size. Um, and format AAC. Um, so I'm leaning towards a smaller file size to send to the grade here. Um, ironically, when we come to sound, we're going to do the opposite. Um, so if, if your grade requests it, or if they're fine with it, you could send them DNX or ProRes. Um, but from, I've noticed that an H.264 tends to be a perfectly fine, um, file for guide for them. Um, especially if they're cutting resolve, the way that they can link the guide mod uh, to their sequence, um, it, you know, works very well. So you want a smaller file that's easier for resolve to deal with for jumping back and forth. So an H.264 generally be fine for the grade but if they ask for something else something a bit higher res um you know then you can give that to them but they have the source media there so once their timeline's relinked this is literally just a guide for picture where things fall and how resizes should look and stuff like that uh, they've got the full quality stuff right in front of them so i would export that out i've got a folder prepped um one for grade one for sound and my grade i would have guide picture and that would go in there. And you hit export. And let that go and do its thing. Now, since we've already made our markers, let's export those as well while we're here. So just open up the markers window under tools, markers. And I'll just grab all of the yellow ones because I know that's my online notes. Make sure this is sorted. And then I'll go export. So grade, online notes, drop that in there. Next up and arguably the most important one for the grade is the AAF. And this is what they're going to use to rebuild their timeline. Now, uh, something to note here, if you're coming from Avid um, to something like Resolve for the grade or another Avid, um, if you have done resizes using, you know, classic Avid effects like 3D warp, resize, um, all those kind of things, they should transfer in an AAF quite well. Um, but if you are opening um, FrameFlex on the timeline and making adjustments there and resizing using that, uh, which you can do, um, then I found they, they don't always come through in AAFs too well, actually. Um, they can be nice and quick and easy because you don't need to drop an effect on on the timeline, um, but they can cost you come, coming over to delivering to online and cause a bit of a pain. So I'll generally avoid that method and just always use 3D warps uh, like this one. Nice and simple. 3D warp is just the absolute go-to effect. You can do everything. Keying, resize, rotates, you know, um, all kinds of good stuff. But yeah, stay away from flame facts. Um, so I'll just go to file and export. And I'll go to my grade folder again and select AAF. 
So we'll create a setting for that. So we'll go AAF and um, yeah, that's more or less exactly it actually. Um, so uh, I will tend to stay away from use marks and select the tracks. Um, I, I like to just prep the timeline exactly with what I want exported. Um, and in this instance, anyway, we want absolutely everything um, exported for video. Um, and there's a tick box down here that's include all video or include all audio. So we just leave audio unticked for now. AAF protocol and Pro Tools compatibility on, um, just, you know, because we don't know what system people are using. And then down here in the main section, uh, export method, we want link to, um, don't export. Um, because there's no point in including media with this um, because they're going to be linking back to the source camera files. So, um, and it'll also take a long time to export if you're going to, you know, compress a whole bunch of media to go with it. Um, we're also sending our, our guide mob with it as well. So linking to it is perfectly fine. So I will save this as Vision AAF. And I'll export that in my AAF folder. See, and that was really quick. And whenever you export an AF, you'll get a dot exported one uh, sequence after it, which contains just what was exported in the AF. So you can see that it only contains the video. Uh, right now, uh, a couple more things for grade. Uh, first is we'll go tools, list tool, and we'll make some EDLs. Uh, so list tool is the replacement to our old um, EDL manager. Uh, but I, I do find it's much more intuitive, uh, faster, and you get a quick preview of what you're exporting. It's quite nice. Um, so um, if under here in the output format, you can see all the different variants of um, an EDL. Um, I like file 32. That's quite a commonly accepted one. Some people ask for a CMX 3600, but file 32 generally do the business. So I'll select file 32 there. Um, and then list options is where you'll be able to tinker it um, and decide exactly what goes into it. Um, so under list options, I'm going to make sure nothing's ticked under picture and sound, but then in both picture and sound, just clip name and real name. And that should give us everything that we that the grade should need for conforming and relink. Um, but we can take a look before we export it. So going back to input, to so as we can load our sequence into the list tool, We'll just hit load and it will load whatever sequence you currently have open in the background. Um, I am using the exported uh, sequence back here, one that was made from the AAF, but that's perfectly fine because it's got all of our vision in it. So I'm going to use just uh, V1 and V2 um, since all the rest is either titles or effects or something else. V1 and V2 should have all of our actual um, edited media on it. Um, and now once I've selected the tracks I want, I've can I've set up my EDL and I've loaded my sequence, I can hit preview up here and it'll show me a preview of what this EDL will look like. And that is all the info we will need. So you can see that it's got my slate name here. Um, so that's your clip name. So that's what I've named the synced subclips. And you can see that underneath it, it's got the uh, source camera name and then over to the right we've got source time code in and then out um, for each instance on the cut and we've got uh, sequence time code in and out that is the format of our EDL and that's everything that they'll need for vision so then we just need to come back up here next to preview and hit save list to one file and then we can save it so grade EDL, and I'll just rename it to you know, that dot exported zero one, and save. There's your EDL. And if you want, uh, if you're going to be doing more of these, um, if, if say you're on a series, you got a bunch of episodes, uh, you can save this uh, EDL preset up here, just under active setting. Just go to save as, and I'll do grade turn over. Save. There we go. Now, uh, at this point, let's take a look at our spec sheet and uh, see how we're doing.
so on the grid, we have donor AAF, we have donor EDL, donor gate picture, and we've done our online notes, but we just need to supply them the Avid bin. So I'll come back to Avid. I will close my uh, lock cut, uh, grade bin. Then I will navigate to it here and just right click the bin and hit reveal file. Then as soon as you do that, um, a Finder or Windows Explorer window will pop up uh, with your um, with your bin. And I'll bring over my other window here. And then we can just drag and drop that into our Avid bin folder. And there we go. That's all ready to go. So now all of our deliverables for our grade are ready to roll. And as I do each one, if I'm on a Mac, I like to add a little finder tag, um, green one there, so I know that that individual one's done. Uh, if you look in these, we'll be able to see them all, except guide picture, because I, I didn't want to wait for it to export. Um, but they're all done. Nice. Let's move on to sound. Right, everyone, that brings us to the end of part one of A105, and you're delivering to online. So it did have to be split into two parts again, I'm afraid, because I'm trying to get these down to roughly half an hour per module. And uh, the, the full recording, uh, the first time I attempted it was about two hours, um, 40 minutes. And, uh, you know, the, in the rerun, it was about uh, just over two hours. Um, so uh, getting this first half down to half an hour was a bit of a challenge. I do have a bit of a habit of going off on a tangent and just talking about post-production for edges and, and little tidbits and, and stories and things um yeah so i had to cut all that out but part two and the final video probably in the e100 series will be coming next week where we'll mostly be going into um creating and delivering a thorough batch of deliverables for uh sound as always a huge thank you to my patreon subscribers if you ever want to um check out uh, more content like this there's there's some more over on patreon where i break down some more of my own personal workflows and and how i like to do things I try to put the, the more subjective stuff on Patreon and, and the more objectively true and factual, technical way um, stuff on YouTube. But as for this video, guys, we are all done. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next week for the final and E100. See you then.